Hello boys and girls, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. I'm Stian, and today we have a legend on the bench. The Longin 30L. It's a simple movement, hand wound with uh, three hands. No complications. But even if it's not serviced for a long time, we see it runs very nicely. And the dog sound you hear is actually something I programmed in to see if there's uh, friction on the pallets. Oh, we can hear there's quite a lot actually. No, just kidding, of course. It's a neighbor's dog barking like crazy. And there we have the movement. The legendary 30L. Now, why is it legendary? Well, if you look at uh, this chart, See if you can see when the 30L entered the competition. Yep, from 1955 and through to the end of the competitions in the Châtel in 1967. The Longines 30L crushed basically everything. Rolex, Omega, Zenith, what have you. And there are a few reasons for that. We're going to get into that, uh, of course, during the service. Let's just first get uh, the hands off and the dial. Now, some of you might uh, recognize this watch. I uh, talked about this watch in the, the overview of my collection. So I know the watch hasn't been serviced for about 20 years, because that's when I bought it. And there's an old saying that uh, the shoemaker's children go barefoot. So it's a little bit the same with watches, I think. Now, one thing to notice already with the ratchet wheel, you see the underside is beautifully finished. And that's really not necessary. You want it to be flat and clean, of course, with no bursts and such, but you don't need to finish it. But that is really one of the reasons why vintage Longines are perhaps the best watches you can buy. The attention to detail and the overall finishing and quality is just very, very high. And the prices aren't that crazy. You can see uh, the movement is, uh, of course, fully jeweled. And you have this beautiful uh, little gold chatons around each uh, jewel as well. And it's also not necessary. But it certainly adds to the aesthetic of the watch. Another thing uh, some of you might have noticed is that the balance is uh, really big. And that is one of the key uh, things for making a good movement. Try to uh, make the balance as big as possible. That's why small movements are uh, less uh, accurate in typical terms. Other small things, like the arms on his wheels are rounded. All bridge and cocks are beveled. And there's a lot of oil. Not quite as much as in the Pabieda video. But there's way too much oil here. So we're going to pre-clean that a little bit. Doesn't smell like fish oil, so that's a good thing. And I think we have the culprit. The barrel is self-lubricating. So it's been uh, self-lubricating for 20 years, then uh, that's a lot of lubrication. As you can see, there are really no surprises in this movement. Everything is very straightforward, very simple, just very well made. And again, a lot of oil. So in terms of uh, accuracy, 
Uh, I mentioned that uh, large balance is important. Uh, you did have uh, 30L models. So just to be clear, the 30L is a base model. And then you had chronometer models, of course, which was the 30Z. But you can also find chronometer versions of the 30L. I talked quite a lot about uh, the chronometer certification in uh, the video on the 1962 Omega Constellation. But basically, you have uh, a movement that you start off with, in this case the 30L, and then you adjust it. You might change a couple of things, like the regulating mechanism or larger balance wheel, maybe a Breguet overspring, that kind of thing. But the most important thing is that you have a good base movement. And the 30L is a very, very good base movement. One thing to note, we see that the mainspring has a so-called DBH end. I mean, it has two small prongs sticking out that have to fit into the barrel. And that's sometimes you unfortunately see that uh, people haven't really paid any attention to. So there is a small dent in this uh, barrel lid, but it's not uh, major. We pretty much picked everything apart. So we're just uh, pegging the jewel holes. And then we can put stuff in the basket and get it to the cleaners. And while we're waiting for that to finish, Let's uh, clean the case and the bezel and the case back. I'm going to use an ultrasonic for that. And this one produces the loveliest sound I know. Mmm, like a symphony. And actually, it took a bit longer than uh, those uh, four minutes we're doing the ultrasonic for. But that's the beauty of editing. It's like black magic. Or maybe white magic, even. So one of the tricky things with this uh, DBH spring is making it fit into the mainspring winder. So we have to very gently uh, open it a little bit up. So that these two prongs uh, fit in there. And then we can put the mainspring back in the barrel. And as noted, we need to put those two prongs into the holes where they fit. Otherwise, it's uh, fairly standard. And yes, it's supposedly self-lubricating. Um, don't trust what vintage watches tell you. If it says waterproof on them, don't trust that. In uh, quite a few Longin watches, you find these uh, transparent uh, capstones, which can be a real pain in the ass if you drop them. But they also have these uh, circular grooves in them to uh, keep the oil from uh, running off. So that's nice. And this one has a thicker jewel on the top, so in the balance. It's also relatively common in these old uh, watches. And with the shock settings in place, we can check if the balance uh, oscillates freely. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Looks very nice. The beautiful uh, blue hairspring. A lovely balance with the screws on uh, the rim. We 
we're not going to put the barrel in upside down, but we're going to oil it a little bit. When assembling uh, the train of wheels, uh, most people actually start with uh, the escape wheel. Somehow I like to start with the center wheel when, it's, uh, when there is one. And this is one of the beauties with a well-made movement. The parts kind of just fall into place. Before putting in the escape wheel, we're gonna use fixer drop on the escape wheel and also the path fork. And then we need to clean the pivots of those afterwards. So we don't risk getting any debris into the movement. Very important that we get uh, the pivot into the jewel hole before we press down on the cock. There, we see it just dropped a little bit, and that's the sign that uh, the pivot is in the hole. And then we can put on the barrel bridge. And this is uh, one of those movements where you can basically screw all the screws down at the same time. Well, not the same time, but uh, you don't have to go back and forth between a lot of screws. So how does this movement uh, stand up today? Well, it's still a fantastic movement. Of course, almost all watches nowadays are uh, automatics. But the level of uh, finishing, the quality level, the attention to detail is quite unparalleled uh, compared to today. It's not a super slim movement, but it's uh, slim enough, if you will. Of course, today they wouldn't make this. It would be much uh, thinner. They would stamp out uh, half the plates and everything. But back then, everything was made with the best materials, by the best engineers, and with the best attention to detail. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why vintage watches are better than new ones. Now, the observant viewer might have seen that the crown was not original. So we got all the one that is, with the original DNA also. So we're going to clean it up. 60-year-old DNA might be useful for uh, cold cases, but not as much uh, in a nice watch. So we're going to clean it with some uh, essence of Renata. And let's also tidy the threads up a little bit on the stem. Just use an old screw plate for that. We're not going to use Loctite quite yet, because we want to see whether or not uh, the crown fits, or if the stem is too long on the case. But with the new, or actually a very old crown, we can put the stem back in. As noted, there are really no surprises in this movement. Everything is very textbook, if you will. Very straightforward, just very well made. As uh, you might know, I like to put on the cannon pinion first, so we don't have to try to press it between the teeth of the minute wheel. I will save the teeth a little bit. And we're putting some uh, D5 or uh, equivalent on all these different posts. And we're going to put some grease on the friction points uh, in the winding mechanism. Also known as the keyless works. Keyless because there is no key. 
and that's a little bit uh, like talking about uh, payphones to today's youth. Oh, no key. Why would there be a key? We're going to see that in a video coming up in not so long. Why there's uh, a keyless works. Anyway, back to uh, the 30L. So this specific watch is uh, from 1967. One of the later models. And it's also worth noting that uh, Longin, although they did have series names like uh, Conquest or Flagship, most of the 30Ls uh, were just in dress watches with simply uh, the Longin logo on it. You actually do have some flagships with the 30L, but they're uh, very rare. And most 30Ls you'll find in watches like this one. Stylish but uh, simplistic uh, dress watches. So we put together most of the wheel train again. So we're going to oil the pallets using a 941 oil for that. And as you might uh, see, uh, I bent the tip of my oiler so that it's a little bit easier to reach uh, the proper spot on the pallet fork, or on the pallet stone rather. With that done, we can put uh, this uh, beautiful big ass balance back in place. And it starts ticking right away. High quality. Give it a good wind. We're going to put some oil, put some D5 in the center wheel and the third wheel. We're putting 90-10 on the fourth wheel and the escape wheel. And of course nothing on the pallet pivots. Before we put it on the time grapher, we're going to demagnetize it. And wouldn't you look at that. No need to do anything. Just change oil and uh, off you go, sir. You might have seen that the beat there was uh, 1.0, which is uh, just acceptable. And given that this movement uh, does not have a mobile stud carrier, it's not so easy to adjust. But it's also not necessary if it's uh, one second or less. So we're going to leave it at that. With the dial back on, we're going to put the hands back on. The dial is a little bit worn around the edges and there are a few marks around uh, the small second sand on the pivot and that is unfortunately quite uh, common. It can be difficult to get uh, the hand levers underneath there. So one thing to try if you encounter that is to uh, loosen the dial screws and try to press the dial a little bit further in. That could give you just enough space. But it's not good practice to uh, take the dial off with the sub-seconds uh, hand on. That uh, can create marks by itself. We're going to replace the crystal as well. Just measure it and then find the proper one. And given that this one fits into the bezel, we're going to sort of bend the crystal onto this uh, little uh, round anvil. When it curves down a little bit, we can press the bezel up onto the crystal. And when we release the pressure, the crystal will uh, then expand into the bezel. Oh, it worked. Wow. Time to case the watch. Or case the movement, rather. 
And now we can see if uh, the stem is uh, the good length. Hopefully it's not too short. Well, actually, we know it's not. It is a little bit too long. So let's take the stem out and shorten it just a little bit. Mm, also a lovely sound. Gonna put a little uh, bevel on the stem as well. And when we know it's the right length, we can put on some Loctite so that the crown stays in place. Very important. Otherwise the crown is gonna come loose when you set the time. Last thing we do, we use the blower to clean uh, the movement, make sure there's no dust there. And the same thing uh, in the case back. And then we can enjoy our watch. With a new strap on it, looks pretty good, I would say. Just a very classic and classy, timeless uh, dress watch. I'm going to put this one up for sale as well, but uh, see how fast we get to taking pictures. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then clicking like and subscribe will really help us. We'll be back uh, shortly with another video. Until then. Ta-ta.